I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps RC, and today we're gonna get serious. We're gonna talk about one of the greatest radios of all time. We're gonna talk about what's great about it, and we're gonna talk about some of the things that I don't like about it, because hey, there's caveats with everything that we use in the hobby community. Now, I've been using the X7 for a long time, most of 2017, and it's been one of my favorite go-to and easiest radios to work with. Also, for new guys getting into the hobby, I would recommend you start out with something like this, unless you're the guy who has to have absolutely everything. It took me a couple days going through the manual to figure out what this radio was all about and to unlock some of the most awesome features in here. So I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna put it on the bench and I'm gonna go through what the benefits are of paying that extra money for something like the X10S. Here's a little close up of the FR Sky X10S. Go ahead and make this full screen because I'm about to seriously blow your mind with this transmitter. And we're gonna get started with some of the main features of the radio and what I like about it the most. We're also gonna talk about in this video what I don't like about the radio. And we're gonna mostly go over the positives because there's actually more positives than negatives about this radio. FR Sky has pretty much thought of everything for this radio, for the hobby enthusiast, and I'm just gonna tell you some of what I think are the top traits that the X10S has to offer. Now, first off, we'll talk about the appearance. It does come in three different faceplate options. It comes in amber, silver, and this carbon fiber that you see here, which I prefer myself. And the shape and the overall appearance of the radio is very similar to my X7, but it is a little bit heavier at 1,000 grams, so in my hands, it actually does feel quite more substantial than the X7. It does have rubber grips on the top handle right here and rubber grips on the side for when your fingers come around to the back. And there is a bevel right here so your fingers rest nicely in place while you're holding the transmitter. Very similar to what you had on the X7. Now one con I thought right away was that there's no access to the battery inside this radio uh, from the outside. There's no tray door, which I think is kind of strange, but if you have a Phillips head screwdriver, you can take out these four screws and the ones underneath the rubber grips and you can access the battery and put a new battery in which is an inconvenience if you're out in the field and if your battery dies and you don't have your charger along with you. You will have to have a secondary battery and a Phillips head screwdriver out in the field if you do run out of battery. So I, I consider that a con. But the battery is improved on this one and it is a 2S2600 battery operating at 7.2 volts and you'll get seven hours of battery life with this transmitter. So during a flight day, I'm sure that you're not gonna have your radio on for more than seven hours. Now it also has module support back here for adding different modules if you wanna do some long range type stuff or add some different type of receiver protocol, you can do that on this one, just like on the X7, the X7S, the X10, and the X9D which is what most of us want because we want to be able to expand this bay and do different options with this radio. I also noticed with this radio that they extended this kickstand back here and the reason they did that was because when you have a module back here and there's an antenna coming up on my other transmitter, my kickstand was kind of getting in the way. It was a little bit too close to the external antenna coming off the module. So they've increased this length right here, which really helps in any external antennas coming off your module. This is great. Now the X10S also has three antennas built into this. So it has two internal antennas and you have a removable antenna up top here. So if you want to upgrade this to something else, you can. But as Mr. Steele pointed out in his video, that there is a recessed receiver port in here. So if you look at this right here, it goes down inside the plastic. You're not going to use a Dremel tool to Dremel out your brand new $400 radio. Uh, you're most likely going to have to get an extension port right off the top of this. Some kind of little extension in between this and whatever antenna you're putting on there if it's too big. That would be my suggestion. Now what's also cool about the antenna setup inside the radio, you can choose between using the internal antennas or the external or both at the same time. So all three at the same time, that's kind of a nice feature. Also one of the highlights of the X10S is the fact that it has these all aluminum CNC digital 10 ball bearing hall sensor gimbals. They are extremely different than the original hall gimbals that you guys have used this year. Um, some people have claimed that these are a little bit more responsive. They are pretty snappy. I'll let you listen to them real quick. You can hear this is all aluminum in here. So this is very different than the original hall gimbals that first came out earlier in 2017. 
These are the brand new version and they are adjustable inside. So if you want to make them a little looser, you can do that by adjusting the screws on the inside of the radio. Personally, I'm going to adjust this so that they're a little more loose because from the factory, it does feel pretty tight to me. Another really cool feature is the fact that it does have Bluetooth and it connects to the FR Sky Freelink app. So you can open up your app on your phone, your iOS device. I think the Android one is being developed right now. So Android guys, you'll kind of have to wait on that, but it's a pretty cool app. It's super slick, but it lets you see all of your real-time data from your quad, uh, also your fixed wing and other types of models connected to this transmitter. Now it also has wireless trainer support so you can connect to another radio, make this one the master, make the next one the slave, and you can go into the menu settings and you can select it, make it searchable, and find the other radio and link them up without using cables. Or you have the option to actually use the cable from the back of the transmitter, which is pretty cool. You also have 16 channels, expandable up to 32 channels. It has eight external switches on the outside of the radio. Six of these are actually three position switches. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And you also have a momentary switch, which is also a two position switch here. And you have a two position switch here, which I usually set this one as my arm switch. And you have three pot switches in the middle. This one is nice and smooth. The one in the middle has notches and the one on this side has a notch right in the center. Over where your right hand's gonna be, you have this sort of gimbal type switch over here. This can be an activated pot as well. And you also have another one on the left side of the transmitter. Now here's my X7 next to the X10S and it's quite a big difference here as far as size goes. It is a little bit taller and it's quite a bit heavier as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on the X7 so you guys can see what that screen looks like. You do have an L, you have an LCD, a lit LCD screen on this one as well. Uh, just not quite as bright as what you have over here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the X10S and check out this full color screen. Now we can talk about the color screen and I'll go inside the radio and I'll show you how cool this radio can really be from the inside. And I'll just give you a view from the back for both of these radios. And you can see this has a battery bay here, which I like this a lot that it does have a battery bay because you know what that means? That means that I can stop on the road anywhere, pick up some AA batteries and I can put it back in this transmitter. Now this one on the other hand doesn't have that bay there for the battery. So you're gonna have to use a screwdriver to open it up like I said before. Uh, that's one drawback of this radio, but it it is uh, by appearance, it's a much finer, nicer looking radio. Now, before we dive into the screen here, I want to show you the X9D next to it. Even look, it's even bigger than the X9D. Look how much bigger it is than the X9D. Uh, and I'll show you the back of this. Mine's kind of beat up from years and years of use and abuse, but from the back, you can see they both have those module bays. Uh, and the X9D is kind of the crowd favorite, by the way, if you're looking for a transmitter, definitely consider this one. You have that open battery bay back here with a rechargeable battery you can take out and charge on your standalone charger. Now, if you open this one up, you can also do that with this one. You can take this battery out and charge it on your standalone charger. Now, this is an LCD screen with 480 pixels by 272 pixels wide. Um, so it's actually really good and bright outside. And that's what everyone wants to know. Can you see this screen outside? Absolutely, you can. A friend of mine actually, uh, it was the first question he had. Can you see this full color screen outside? Well, it looks great indoors, but what about outdoors? Uh, so I can verify that this looks awesome outside. I actually turned down the screen brightness inside the radio settings um, just because it was actually a little bit too bright when it came from the factory. Now making changes and navigating the radio at first seemed kind of odd to me, but after I used it for about 10 to 15 minutes, I started to get used to the way this is set up. Now over here on the right hand side, this is a push button and a jog wheel. And on the left hand side, you have a system here, model, telemetry, return button, and a page up and page down button right in the middle. So if I reach up here and I press the power button and I hold it, it will go ahead and start up. You'll see the OpenTX logo load up, and this is after you load this operating system. Originally, I started out with the original Horus FR Sky operating system, and I didn't really like the way that looked, so I wanted to have something a little bit fancier and um, you know what, this is out of focus just a little bit here. Let me see if I can get it to focus. And I'm gonna turn down the camera a few notches so you can really see the definition in the screen. It is a really, really nice screen. Now we're talking about screen brightness. Check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the system here and I'm just gonna scroll down using the scroll wheel and I'm gonna go all the way down. I'll make this just a little darker so you can see the definition in the text. I'll go all the way down to where we see brightness, backlit mode. And this is the brightness right here. So I'm just going to click there on the jog wheel and I can turn that up more. 
just so you guys can see it a little bit better because I did darken the camera aperture. So um, you can read the text on the screen now. now I'm going to go ahead and back out. Remember I told you that return button here takes you back out to the main screen. And this is neat because you can have two different main screens uh, from the page up, page down button. If I click this, it'll go to the second one that I have. Uh, and you should probably be able to scroll through your main screen selections. Now this one I haven't set up. You can see it's all bare bones and it still has the sliders there that you can't see because of my background. Uh, but if I go page up and down again, it goes back to my screen that I've already set up with my three widgets in the middle. I have my name up here. We have the OpenTX logo here. You have a few things up here. You have the date and the time, which is kind of cool. You see December 23rd, 1603. You have your RSSI signal here. You have your battery inside your radio and your transmitter right there. And this little one right above it, it kind of looks like an eyeball with a couple Wi-Fi points coming off of it. That is actually for your telemetry. So when you plug in your quadcopter, if you have telemetry coming to your radio from your receiver and your, your quad will see it there, it'll show up there uh, just how much telemetry bars you have. Kind of like a cell phone, it's kind of neat. Now you can also set the screen up to go to an auto dimming state and actually turn the radio off. Um, but I don't have that completely set up. I do have it to auto dim after about 15 seconds of non-use. So if I touch one of the sticks, you can see it comes back on there. Now I mentioned before that I'm running OpenTX software on this radio and it was really easy to update. I was trying to update it the old school way by using the USB cable and running OpenTX on my Mac and it was a lot easier than that. What I realized was that when I did read the manual later, that you do it by the SD card in the bottom right here. There's an SD card slot. You pull out your SD card, uh, which you're going to provide your own, by the way. I have a 16 gigabyte one in here that works great. And I put the stuff that's supposed to be on there from the OpenTX website. You can go to OpenTX.org and you can download the SD card contents that's supposed to be on the card. And when you do that, there's going to be a folder in there called firmware. And also on the OpenTX.org website, you're going to find your latest firmware bin file for the FR Sky Horus X10 and the X10S. When you find that, the latest one is that you're going to be in the nightly files on their website. Put that in the firmware folder and then put it in your radio and start up your radio and it's going to load up with this new screen and the OpenTX software is already going to be running on there because it automatically updates. And that's so cool compared to what we had to do before. It just took a little longer and this is kind of a, a much better system that they have going here with this update. So on the older radios, you got a black and white picture there if you wanted to load up some type of picture for your model. And that was kind of cool, but this is nice that this is a full color picture. So it's very easy to get to that. So I'm just going to go ahead and press the model button there and hold that for a second. And it loads up Baby Hawk R there. You see where it says Hawk there? That's where you go and select from your folder. And if you have more models, more model names for your JPEGs in here, it should be 200 by 200. You'll see a list of them there and you can scroll through that list. I actually do have the GT215 on there. And I'll just go back out real quick and I'll show you that that loaded up. That's kind of cool that you can see that there. So we'll go back out, go back to GT15 and I will switch that back to Hawk and go back out and now it's on the baby hawk picture. So just drop this image file on your SD card in the images folder and they will automatically load up when you put it back in your radio. But you will have to add it physically in the model. So once you set up your model, just go down to where it says model image and select your image. Now let's go ahead and get started and get familiar with the different modes on this button on the left hand side over here. We're going to start out with telemetry and uh, this is where you can change up a lot of the widgets. Uh, with this X10S, we are introducing screen widgets. So this is kind of cool. It works kind of the same way like it would on a web page. If you're adding widgets to a web page, you have these little squares and inside each one of these little squares exists some type of information and you can change that move these around or you can add different widgets here and there you can even add a timer up on the top bar up here all of this up top is customizable you can see my name here you can add your own text on there you can add a phrase or whatever you'd like to do you can also add a few more telemetry modules up there as well having different information come back from your quad so this is pretty cool I'm gonna go ahead and click on that for you I'm going to click and hold it. And the first one is main view one. Now you can have more than one main screen on this radio. It's kind of crazy. It comes set up to default with two, but if I page over, you can see the tabs there go over to, to the right. You can see the tabs go to the right and it's tab scrolling in this radio, which is really cool. So if I tab again, 
it says add main view. So I can add a third and fourth and fifth and who knows how many different main pages if I want. Now, why would that be cool? That would be cool if you have a bunch of different categories. If you wanted to switch back and forth, say you're flying a demo for someone and you want to show off a logo and then you're going to do something different for yourself, you can switch back to your favorite screen, which is kind of nice because everything is customizable. Now we'll go back to where it says main view one and this is where you change and set up your widgets. I have this set up right here. You can see there's a large part right here and then there's two little pieces right there. So if I go back out, you see there's a large part here, two little pieces. Now I don't have a widget here because that image for the drone camps logo is actually incorporated into that carbon fiber background. This one is actually a widget, it's a timer widget and then I have my model widget there. Now the top bar is separate from these center screen widgets. So we'll go back into telemetry again. You can see layout here. I can select different layouts for my widget blocks, which is really neat. And each widget inside those blocks as well can be changed. So we have like eight different widgets there on that one. I can select that one. I can select four up, two up, or a single screen like a traditional radio setup. But I'll, I'll, I'll stick to that three up section right there for my widgets uh, because I'm using only those first two. So I'm going to go with that one. I like the Drone Camps logo up top there too. So uh, you can also, once you make a selection, you can say return. And you can go back down to set up widgets and here is where you can go ahead and start moving stuff around and playing with uh, what's inside your widgets. So I'll go back again. If I hit return, it takes me back to the setup and I can scroll down. I can change, make I take the top bar off or on by taking this off. You see the top bar is gone now and I can go back and I can add it again. Now it'll be back. Flight mode, I can take the flight mode on and off if I don't want that on there. I can take the sliders on and off, which I did because I haven't set up the colors yet. So there's just, you can see the center trims here and go back in and I'll turn that off just for looks and the trims you can take on or off or you can completely remove the screen. So it's got a lot of features even with this new widget system that they've added on the OpenTX software. Pretty neat. So now I'll show you how to change the background. I put my background on the SD card and I, I did it in Photoshop. I'm going to scroll over to where it says user interface there and you can see theme right here, background, main color, and top bar. So this is where you change up the widgets on your top bar. You can click setup there and it's going to let you scroll through each section up here on the top bar on the main page. So uh, we'll start out with a theme up top and I'll click on that with the jog wheel and I'm just going to go ahead back to this blue one right here and I'll click on that. You'll see it change the whole interface. Check that out, it's like a different skin for this radio. So you can go in here and customize everything, all the colors, the images, and everything. If I go back out now, you don't see that Drone Camps logo there anymore. If I go back in, I wanna change it back to that. I'm gonna scroll back over to where it says User Interface, and click on that again for themes. Scroll back to that middle one, that's the original theme there. And I'll go back, and you see this again. Now, it didn't hold on to my top color because it went back to the default. So my radio colors, I can change that very simply by going back to that same page for user interface, main color right there. Now, it's set up like an RGB setup, so we're going to take all the red out completely. I'm going to go over to green, and I'm going to bump that green way up to the green that I like right about there kind of matches the open TX theme color. So I'm going to leave blue. I'll leave a little bit of blue in there. So we'll go back here. Now we go back out of that. Keep pressing return so the whole thing highlights and then you can go down to setup. So now I brought my green back. Now for the top bar, if you want to click setup right there, it'll take you outside again to the main screen. And now this is where I have my custom text set up right there where you can scroll over and change any of these. See where it says outputs here? You can change it to rudder value, model. You can put what model you're on up there if you want to. Custom text and timer, all kinds of cool stuff. Battery check, counter, all kinds of cool widgets are in there. So I'm not gonna put anything there. I'm just gonna return and go back out, but that's pretty powerful setup for customization of your image display in your radio. And you can go as far as adding your own images and make up your own custom themes. Now, speaking of switches, this is really cool because they do allow a six position encoder for easy setup of multiple flight modes. Say if you're using something like iNav, Eagle Tree, or RG Pilot, and you have multiple levels, of flight modes such as loiter, return to home, things like that. If you want to get really complicated in some type of GPS fixed wing, 
type of aircraft, then you can do that. And this has all the options available for that. So uh, six position encoder is really nice as well. And also inside this radio, guys, you have speech, and we have that speaker right here. It's just above the main screen. Uh, but what's neat about that is it comes with about 10 different languages. So if you're watching this in English and you speak a different language and you want that as your native language on there, you can select that native language inside the radio, and it will um, speak that language right out of your radio for you. So uh, pretty cool. And for the guys who are wanting all the data from all their different flights, all the telemetry saved, obviously, so you can do all that data logging and your flight logging will go all down to the SD card in the bottom here. You can save all of your backups up to your computer from all your different flights. So all that data is recorded from every single flight. Now let's go ahead and jump into the model menu here. This is the button right here. We're going to hold that down and we're going to go into the main screen here. And what I love about this is the fact that it is all tabbed up here. You do have a different icon for each individual tab. And the way you get across is you hit simply page up or page down to get across these tabs. And it's going to take you through the various different modes um, for your switches, special functions, custom scripts for Lua scripts, and your RSSI information. You can change all the values there if you'd like. And also, if you want to go even a step further, you can customize these icons up here because all these image files remain inside the image. I believe it's in the inside the images um, folder on the SD card. One of those folders houses all the information for all the images you see here on the screen. So if you wanted to get really wild, you can customize everything. Kind of neat. Uh, but beyond that, let's go ahead and just talk about my first initial model setup. When you make your first model, go ahead and make your first name. You press here with the jog wheel, and you can scroll through A through Z. You can also do numbers, and I have Baby Hawk R here that's already set. If I press, I'll go all the way across here. You can also make spaces where you can start new letters there. I'm just going to go all the way across until I get back to B, and now it has it all highlighted again. I can go down to the next thing. So this is where you add the image, like I showed you before. Really, really neat that you can add an image on your model. You can have three different timers, and this is pretty cool. Down at the very bottom here, I'm just going to go through. And they also have something in here, pre-flight checklist. That's pretty neat. You can do that as well. Shows me my throttle state. So it should audibly tell me my throttle state. Now at the very bottom right here, this is where some people get confused. is when they're binding up their model and they don't, have any connection to their quad, it doesn't show up in beta flight, they haven't set up the port switches, they haven't set up uh, in the configuration channel. So you have to have all this right. Now if you have an SBUS D8 and you're trying to bind that to your, your quadcopter, once you see the green light on your receiver, it's likely that you have bound it to the radio, but you're not seeing it in beta flight. You have to go make sure that your ports are set up, and you have to also make sure that the configuration tab is right. And then you have to go into the receiver, turn your radio on, sometimes even plug a battery in to get a receiver to show up, depending on the model you're trying to plug in. So um, there's a lot of different steps to trying to get your receiver to talk with beta flight and show you all your channel maps. So there's three, three different protocols, and usually there's only two that most people use these days um, for flying quads and what, generally what we do is D8, which is a smaller channel type receiver, one through channels one through eight. And you have bind down here and you can do your range test and you can change the antenna selection. So you can change it to internal and you can leave it on internal channel uh, antennas because there are two inside. The external antenna is if you're going to use something in module bay. If you're using the module bay, you can click to external. So it's telling me that do I really want to switch? Yes, um, if I do have my module in. If you don't have your module in, don't worry about it. You can use internal antennas there, no big deal. I can go back up to D8 here and say you have an SBUS 16 channel receiver, something like the XM Plus. For an XM Plus, you would go to D16. Once you have D16 selected, you can go down to bind. You can also have a number of receivers. You can number those one through 100 or however many of them you have so that you know which one is which. And you want to set up your fail safe mode, usually to no pulses, guys. Um, very important. That means that the second, the millisecond that you don't have communication coming from your receiver to your radio, your quadcopter is going to go into immediate fail safe and drop to the ground. So uh, most of us fly with no pulses for our fail safe modes. And when you're going to go to bind, go ahead and 
start your bind process just like this and it's going to say one through eight i want telemetry on here so i'm just going to start that process and you'll hear it beep like this now your radio is looking for your receiver so the, what you do next is hold down the button on your quadcopter whichever receiver you're using hopefully this is a, this is actually a d16 one right here um, and you'll hold down that button plug in a battery and when you have a successful bind, you'll see a little green light right next to a little tiny red light. So you should see a red and a green together. And once you're done, just unplug your battery and stop this process by pressing return. So it should be bound up when you do it by that process. Now down just underneath where you do your receiver setup, there is external RF mode um, options for you guys. You have off right here, you can change it to PPM. If you have a PPM receiver, you can change it to XJT, D, which is uh, D16 there, DSM2, uh, if you had a module supporting that, uh, multi for fly sky stuff which is pretty cool if you have a multi um, type of module which accepts multiple types of radios, which is really neat. Uh, R9M, which is FCC, and we have SBUS there, one through 16. So a lot of people use SBUS. You could probably set it to SBUS, unless you're gonna deviate um, between models, but if you're setting up a different model with a PPM setup, that next model, you just change that back to PPM if you want. Um, no big deal there, but I'm just gonna leave that off for now and uh, go on to the next thing. We're gonna talk about the trainer mode, Right now it's set to master jack and that means that I have uh, to plug in a cable to get my trainer port set up with another radio if I wanted to have a buddy box type of setup. So uh, master jack, you can change that to slave, make this radio the slave and not the master. Or you could do master battery or you could do master Bluetooth using Bluetooth. So this is a new option, wireless buddy boxing with another radio which is pretty cool because you can let your buddy fly your quad um, and the second that you touch the radio but uh, the radio sticks it's going to take over so um, if, if you think they're going to go in and hit a tree or crash your quad you can immediately take over as the master controller you also have the bluetooth option to do slave make this radio slave so I'm gonna leave that to master jack for now because that's the default and I'm not buddy boxing right now. So we'll just leave that right there. But there's a lot of options in the model setup you guys can do. Um, very, very nice. But the cool thing about this is that once you have one model set up and everything is working in beta flight, you can pretty much leave everything the way it is uh, and copy this model and make a new one. Um, and that way you have some sort of recipe for the next model that you're gonna introduce into your radio. And that'll save you a ton of time. Sometimes I don't even rename the, the quad because I'm um, flying different quads all the time. So um, as long as I have everything else set up in here and I know it's the same type of receiver, I'm pretty much good to go in my channel maps inside Betaflight and everything works flawless. And I was telling you guys that this is tab scrolling and this is really cool um, in model setup because it, it's, it's um, just giving me a little visual and you have flight modes here and you're not really gonna mess around with this too much. Um, your inputs are what you're going to set up for your initial setup for this particular model and your mixer there so that everything is uh, working properly in beta flight. If you see things going the wrong way, come back over to the mixer and um, mix these up and then you will have things working the right direction. So in, in other words, if you see that rudder and throttle are on the same channel and both of those channels are moving at the same time, which is really annoying, you can come back in here and say switch out rudder and aileron and then you will have them working properly. Because sometimes if you have two of the same, of course, two or three of the same sometimes will have all three of them moving. So you get some pretty wacky stuff going on and you can fix all that right here in the channel mixer. Now moving on across here, you have channel outputs there. One, one through, uh, let's see, we should have 36 channels there. 32, okay. And the next screen over is your curves. You're not gonna have to do anything with that. Global variables, you guys don't need to do that. Logical switches are fine. Special functions, um, custom scripts is where you're going to add some Lua scripts for your um, different types of smart telemetry, which is kind of cool. You can get really customizable there. And your uh, telemetry settings for low alarm, critical alarm, disable telemetry alarms if you want. You can add new sensors, discover new sensors, delete all sensors and start completely over. And you can change up your varometer in here, source and range. Also pretty cool. So we're gonna go back to the main screen now. 
So now that we talked about the model setup and I showed you a little bit about the model tab and all the different tabs inside that section, let's go ahead and press system over here. We'll take you into the radio setup area and I'll show you all the customizable stuff in here too. You have tabs across the top again and you can access those by page up, page down. Let's go across here and it shows me my global trainer section here. Um, how I have my trainer channel set up on the other radio, obviously. Um, we have hardware here, and we have the information for the latest version of firmware on here. Now, this is OpenTX 2.2.1 on here, and that is for the X10S, and that's from 12.22.2017. So, pretty new version of this firmware I have on here. Now, we'll go back all the way over to radio setup, and I just wanted to show you this folder all over again. Um, you see the little mini SD card icon there? These are all the folders that exist on my micro SD card. And this is pretty cool because what I told you guys about before, where your images exist for all of your model images inside this folder, you can go and rename it, but you can't really um, go in there and uh, tool around with things in this particular menu. But you do have all the folders right there. So we can see Crossfire firmware, images, logs, models, etc. So we press return to go back out, which I went too far. Radio setup, we can change the date and the time here. We can go down and change battery meter range. Right now we're going to leave it to the default because that's pretty much the range that came with this 2S battery inside this radio. You can also change the sounds. And I have the sounds cut off because I kind of get on my nerves just beeping, going back and forth when I'm making selections. But you can change them on if you'd like. You can also make your alarms louder or quieter, which I usually like to have things a little bit quieter. Now the haptic is where you have a little motor inside the radio that vibrates when you have an alarm. So you can turn that on or off um, for all the different processes. So if you wanted it to vibrate every single time you move the dial, which is kind of annoying, you can do that if you want. I usually have it turned off, but you can also set it up for certain processes, like just the alarm will have the buzzer go off, uh, or you can have a quiet version of it. I usually set that to no key, which means off. And you can change the strength and the length of the uh, vibration for your radio. So that's also pretty cool. Now we also have alarm options here, battery low alarm. When your radio battery is getting low, you definitely don't want this radio to cut off mid-flight. Your inactivity alarm, you could have that set up on the bench. My old Spectrum radio had one and I really didn't like it too much. So I might make that one just a little longer because sometimes I'm making videos for you guys and I'm uh, working and it, it scares the but Jesus out of me when I'm trying to, to make a video or do something all of a sudden on the bench. It's vibrating off the bench. We also have backlight modes um, for both controls, keys, or off. And we're just going to leave that on both. And duration 60 seconds. And after a minute's time, it's going to go into sort of a, a low low power mode and save your battery so your screen's not burning up all your battery juice which is kind of nice we have gps here for the time zone adjust rtc we also have the country code which is american for me and english is going to be my voice language and i can also make that deutsch czech espanol french hungarian quite a few different languages in here like I said, probably about like 10 different languages are inside here for your defaults, which is kind of cool. And I'm sure there's other languages that you can download and add in here if you need to. And for the USB mode, I have set up to ask, and that is um, for the back of the radio where the USB plugs in, either joystick or storage, depending on what I'm doing. So I have the radio to ask. And my default channel order, which is default for me, in Betaflight is AETR. This is what I usually do. Um, and so that's aileron, ele elevator, throttle, and rudder. So if you didn't know what that means, now you know. Um, and you can change that. You can also change it to other things, but I leave it set to AETR for me. Now default mode setup in this radio came to default uh, mode one, which is throttle on the right. And most Americans fly mode two, which is throttle on the left. And this stick configuration was already set up with the throttle 
uh, unlocked like this. So if you get a radio like this and both throttles or both sticks are actually centered like this, then you'll need to open the radio up and make one of these uh, come loose and come down so you can use it as your throttle. You don't want a self-centering throttle by any means uh, on an FPV racer because you don't fly with altitude hold. Um, very important that you set up a, a free moving throttle for FPV racing. So that's pretty much it for the radio setup, guys. And if you had a Tyrannus X7, if you started out with that when you're moving up to this one, it's pretty much almost exactly the same, just a little nicer screen here. Um, and I, I like these jog wheels, like the X9D had the buttons up and down the side, and it took me a while to get used to that, but I had that radio for several years. And um, when I moved over to back to the jog, wheel I just happen to like this a lot better this feels more intuitive and easier to use now aside from all the cool stuff that the radio has inside it um, the interface is, is really rich and easy to use I, I like it a lot in comparison to like w what I've said I've used with my x7 I like this radio it's very simple to start out with um, but I'm liking this one more and more just because I feel like I have a little more control and um, hey I've been flying for a long time so I really enjoy this um, nice colorful screen that comes along with it. Now the charger that comes along with it I'm pretty stoked because they actually changed up the version of the, the charger that I got. Now this is my X10S charger right here and I wrote it on there because it doesn't say anything on this. It doesn't say FR Sky or <laughs> it doesn't say X10S on it anywhere so um, I just usually have to label these because you got a bunch of chargers laying around and you forget what's what. So um, it does have this little connector on the end and mine didn't come with that little box that goes in between here and the bottom of the transmitter where it plugs in at. Uh, right here is your charge port. So pretty cool that they eliminated that little box. A lot of people were complaining about that box because if you lost it then you had no way to charge this transmitter. So it looks like they might have sort of alleviated that issue uh, that some people didn't like. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in for you guys. And let's just show you what the screen looks like when it's charging. And actually, one thing you never wanna do is have your radio on when you plug this in. Uh, you can damage your battery, so make sure your radio's off before you plug this in. Now it's gonna charge about one amp, and while it's charging, you'll see that green light right there, so uh, don't make the mistake of plugging that in while your radio's on on the bench. That might be a fatal mistake for this radio. But I believe the uh, charger runs between 12 volt and like 16 volt or something like that. And I'll just, it says, it says 15 amp on the back of the charger adapter itself, I believe, but I believe it does go up to around 17 to 18 amp, but uh, I wouldn't want to push this one too much. It's not the biggest charger in the world, but very simple. And once you have a full charge on your battery, like I said, you're gonna get like seven hours of battery life out of this internal battery, which is super cool. And also guys, like we've talked about RF module support, uh, external modules, you do have that option on this radio, which is super nice. So if I wanna use my TBS Crossfire, I can use it on either one of these radios because these little bays come off the back and this just simply plugs in on the side right here and powers up. Uh, I'll just show you that little module bay right there real quick so you can see these pins inside here they plug right into the back of the crossfire on this side and you will get some nice long-range reception out of a TBS crossfire which is probably one of my favorite modules right now because it does have the display screen and it will show you me the last known coordinates of uh, GPS coordinates of a, an aircraft if if an aircraft goes down you at least have a way to go actually look for it and find it um, using those exact last coordinates and that's pretty important when you're flying a GPS type of quad. Now aside from getting this super hella sexy transmitter the X10S you also get kind of a soft case this is not a hard case um, I do have a steel case version of an FR Sky case that this one will fit into. It fits my X9D over here to the right and my X7 um, and also the 10XS, but uh, this one will also fit universally any of the other chargers um, and radios that FR Sky makes. So this is kind of a nice case. If you have multiple radios, you can just grab this and throw whichever one you want in here, but it does have styrofoam in here for 
your Horus uh, 10XS. You have gimbal guards, which is kind of nice. They included gimbal guards. These just go right over your sticks while you're traveling. So you don't have to worry about 3D printing your own here. You can actually just stick these right over top of the sticks and cover those up. That's kind of cool. And they give you a pretty decent neck strap here. I was showing this to a friend a couple days ago, and because uh, when he first picked up the radio, he was like, wow, this is pretty substantial feeling in my hands. I hope they have a nice neck strap, and uh, yeah, they actually do. Look at this, it's pretty wide. And it looks like it's some kind of, I don't know if that's real leather, but it's sort of felt on the back. But I put this on um, the first day that I got the radio in and tried it out, and it felt really nice compared to uh, some of my other transmitter straps that I have. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on here for you guys. This clips on just like that. So if weight is a big deal to you, I'll just go ahead and weigh um, two of my favorite radios here, the X10S for you guys. The live weight in grams is 1,042 grams. And I'll switch that over to pounds for you so you can get an idea of how many pounds it is. 2.2 pounds. So almost 2.3 pounds. Um, that's not a, a super light radio by any means, but let's go ahead and weigh the X7 right next to it and I'll just switch that back to grams here and we'll set that one on there and that one is 781 783 grams and I'll switch the mode to pounds here so you can get an idea of it's probably about a pound difference almost nope 1.7 pounds not bad so it's a little bit heavier it's not drastically heavier but every gram more makes a difference around your neck if you're flying for long periods of time for sure um, but I still got to say, I think that the X10S is, is um, sort of moving toward being my favorite, um, even over my X9D over there. Okay, so some final thoughts, and this is just my opinion, guys, on the FR Sky X10S versus something like the X9D, which I religiously use this one. I mean, hands down, this is one of my favorite radios of all time. Um, I have broken this one apart, and I've really gotten to know it over the last couple years. But when this one came into my shop, after I charged it up the first time and I fired it up and started setting up the model menus and I added OpenTX, I started playing around with the themes on there. Um, I set up the first model, was a really easy process and um, just being able to change the firmware on the fly, download the bin file, drop it on the SD card, put it in the radio and fire it up and it automatically updates the firmware on the radio. Um, that was kind of an awesome thing to me because years past I'm doing that um, start the radio up in DFU mode and uh, do it that way the what would now be considered the old school way to do things so um, you don't have to do that with the X10S this is pretty damn awesome that you can just pop the SD card in there with a the new file on there and bam you're up to the latest and greatest firmware um, so we're moving forward and in my opinion the X9D is sort of moving the way of the Buffalo in the past um, so this feels kind of like 2015 and this is definitely stepping up to the next level something like 2018 and beyond um, because uh, this is a much much sexier interface external and uh, internal components with these with the new MC12P CNC full ball bearing aluminum gimbals uh, hall gimbals so those are pretty amazing and uh, I think after I loosen them up a little bit I'm gonna probably really get to like those because they feel a lot different than these original ones um, you know and you can you can upgrade the gimbals on these it's not the end of the world with the X9D if you already have it and you want some sexy gimbals on there, you can always take these out and put um, the Hall 10s in there if you want to. Um, so either way you go, man, you can't go wrong with uh, FR Sky stuff. It's always, um, it's always gonna to do its job and um, actually a lot cheaper than some of the other radios on the market that are um, boasting some of the same type of features. So um, if you looked at any of the Spectrum radios, you know that those are in the four to five to six to seven hundred dollar range. Um, you can get really expensive really fast in this hobby. So uh, FR Sky just continues to 
keep impressing us on sort of a um, beginner level all the way up through um, something more of an e expert level. So I'm not going to say that this is a total beginner radio. If you started out with something like this, I would think you were kind of crazy. Um, so f for starting out in the hobby, maybe consider something like the X7. Um, start out with this because it's around $100 and it's a really kick-ass radio. Start out with that, maybe a year later move into something like the X10S. Um, so for guys that are intermediate or um, advanced flyers, this radio is what you want all day long um, over even my X7. So my X7 might be getting used a little bit less coming up in 2018. So um, I'm really excited to uh, add more models on this radio and uh, really start getting some use out in the field. Pretty excited about that. And uh, getting some of my fixed wing models on there as well with iNav incorporated into it. A little bit of crossfire action. That's going to be a lot of fun this year. So thanks again for watching this full review. This has been the X10S, guys. Um, super awesome radio. Totally customizable inside and out. I love this one. Thanks again for watching. And please do subscribe, guys. I'm Justin Davis, as always, on the Drone Camps channel. I'll see you on the next one.